Hello all, welcome to 100bytes.com. This is a new series about OAuth 2 Auto and OpenID Connect. This series is intended for the audience who has very limited knowledge about OAuth 2 Auto and OpenID Connect. I'm going to explain this concepts more on demos rather than theoretically. Today, industry is shifting towards the cloud and most of the systems are built using a microservices architecture. Microservices architectures composes a single monolithic applications into the multiple services. Systems built using a microservices architecture has a great advantage than the monolithic applications system, uh, and it also has a complexity in developing a systems using a microservices architecture. There are various challenges involving in the microservices architecture is one of the challenges of security. Today data move across its peer services, third party services, or trusted third party devices, mobile devices, tablets, smart TVs, cars, even IoT devices. Uh, for these entities to access this data, the owner of the data has to provide the permission. Here owner is, can be a user or services or any other medium. There should be an easy way for the owners of the data to provide the access or revoke the permission to access their data. Uh, a few years back a group of people come up with these standards to serve these purposes. Now I will explain about the OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect terminologies and concepts defined in the standard. Uh, before going into like I want to give an, uh, given a scenario where uh, let's assume like uh, I am uh, developing a mobile app which is called a photo app which will take the uh, which will take the photo post process it and provide you in a some uh, some graphical manner in this mobile app are giving in uh, one feature like where you can get the photos directly from the photos.google.com and post process it and save it in uh, save it in your device so so here like uh, here like this client app has to re uh, access the photos from the photos.google.com of a particular user okay so this is my scenario let's now it go now it now you can find the uh, roles how it will fit into for fit for this scenario here first is the resource owner whoever owner of the uh, resources that in this case it's a google user here the owner can be an a user um, or it can be an another services or it can be in any entity next is the resource server the resource server is a server which holds the actual protected resources in our case it's a photos.google.com next is a client client is the one who requesting the access to the protected resources in our case it's a photo app and finally authorization server the authorization server is the server which issues the uh, i mean some authorization grant to the client to present it to the resource server to get the protected resources next two slides are straight from the rfcs uh, these two slides are going to explain uh, given brief introduction about the oauth 2.0 and open id connect uh, this is the definition of the OAuth 2.0, which is an authorization framework enables the third party to get the limited access of HTTP service on behalf of a resource owner by orchestrating an approval interaction between the resource owner and the HTTP services. And uh, this diagram you can explain you like how it will actual OAuth 2.0 works. Uh, like uh, you have the various scopes or uh, sorry grant types are defined in this that we can see it in the later part. So if you see in the first course, it's uh, the client is requesting an authorization request to the resource owner. Uh, resource owner in this case, in our case, it's a Google user. And the next is like a resource owner provides a okay, I'll grant you to access the resources. And this client um, uh, client present this grant to the authorization server, which in turn gives an access token. That is actually an uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's a key for the client to present it to the resource server to protect the res uh, to receive uh, to access the protect the resource. So the client again it will send this access token to the resource server which, which it got from the authorization server and at, and access the protect resource in our case it will access the photos. Okay, scope is like one uh, the scope is like one of the parameters which we need to pass it in the communication between the client and the uh, authorization servers. A scope can be a protected resources which can be an email or photo, uh, profile photo or photos.google.com or it's a google drive or in the facebook it can be a, like a uh, comments or in the twitter it will be a tweets or something for whatever it is and protected resources as a result of the dot flow is like you will get an access token access token is a simple jot token which has the information about audience issuer like expiry time what is the issued date and the scope 
all those in informations are uh, pre uh, all those informations are in the in this access token which will be presented to the resource server so that the resource server validate and returns to the uh, i mean like uh, allows the client to access the uh, protected resource next is an open id connect this is uh, the definition of it is like it's a just a simple identity layer which built on the top of oauth 2.0 which enables the client to verify the identity of the end user's authentication performed with authorization server it will also allow allow you to allow the client to download the basic profile information of the user uh, in a like a rest like manner so in this case scope is just an open id which means like i am I'm, I'm accessing i need a basic profile information that will be returned in the form of an jar token called an id token here if you see like rp is a client op is an open id provider uh, the client requesting authentication, uh, client requesting it actually, and the end user prov uh, authenticate and uh, provides authorization. This authorization response is given to the client, and based on that, that uh, based on that, like a uh, uh, like a resource owner, uh, so that sorry, uh, the client will access the request the user info request, which in turn will return a user info response. Next is an endpoint. First and foremost is the service discovery endpoint. This usually is, uh, this, this endpoint is like it will it'll, it'll usually like dot well known slash open ID configurations. This endpoints list down all the endpoints which is exposed in the authorized OAuth server. Uh, like from which, uh, which endpoint you can get authorized, from which endpoint you can get the token, which endpoint exposes the keys to verify the token, what are the algorithms used, uh, used in the authorization server to sign the token, pretty much all the information which is required. Next is a registration for any client which need to access the user's data it has to be registered as a client in the OAuth server. Next is an authorization endpoint. This endpoint authorizes the resource owner to provide the permission for the client to access the data. Token. Token endpoint is the endpoint uh, where it can provides the access token for the clients that is photo app uh, so that whenever it try to access the resources it has to provide this uh, the tokens which obtained from this uh, endpoint introspection this endpoint is used by the resource server to verify whether this token is provided by the valid authorization server revocation revocation endpoint is used to revoke the issued token now the clients Client, there are two types of clients. It's a public client and the confidential clients. The clients which are which they are not able to hold the secret sec uh, secret securely, which for which falls under the public clients. Uh, that the, the these are the applications which define in the standards. Your native and the user agent based applications are falls under category of the public clients. While the confidential client is the clients in the other way, where it can able to hold the information securely which uh, web application falls in this category registration there are two ways you can register the client basically uh, whenever you want uh, whenever a client that is photo app want to um, perform the OAuth or OAuth flow it has to be registered itself with the OAuth server Google OAuth server in this case so that can be registered in two ways either it can be registered in the open or dynamic open registration is like anyone can register it register itself in the dynamic registration it can be registered using an initial access token Actually, if you see this uh, registration types are not defined in the OAuth 2.0 standard but it is defined in the open ID standards okay grant types the mechanism to get the access token to access the resources which is reside in the resource owner after getting the consent from the resource owner the first way is like authorization code which is a more secured way is mostly used in the web app where we have where they have to store secure their uh, seek password which is issued from the OAuth server it is also called three-legged flow implicit flow is, is used in, used by the JavaScript or mobile phone application where they can't store the secrets securely resource owner flow is uh, which involves a real username and password and it has to be used against only with the th trusted third-party applications client credential flows are uh, flow, flows are used to used between the services. Jar bearer token is a more secure way where there is no secrets involved in the communication to get the access token. So all these flows which which provides the access token to the cl client to 
to provide client so the client can provide this access token to the resource server to access the resources but these access tokens are very short, uh, short lived to, uh, and to refresh this uh, to refresh the short lived access token there's another one flow is called refresh token flow using this flow you can able to refresh your access token next is an authentication mode here the authentication mode is for the client uh, basically for the clients uh, client here is means like a photo app what are the ways they can they can authenticate uh, with the authorization server that is OAuth server first is the client secret basics where the username and password is pa encoded and uh, passed as an authorization header client secret post where your uh, uh, secrets are sent in the post body client secret dot authentication mode is to uh, sign your clients using the uh, keys which is provided by the OAuth server private key dot your clients are uh, signed by a possessed private key and none there is no authentication involved between the client and the OAuth server the response mode is like like each uh, like OAuth, this OAuth flow and OpenID flow involves in the, OAuth and OpenID flow involves in the multiple uh, interaction between the uh, client and the servers so each time what uh, each time when it when the server returns there's a response can be in uh, like it falls under these categories in OAuth 2.0 the standards define is a code and a token in the open ID they mention like a uh, code ID token or in the combination of ID token token in the combination of code ID token or all the three code ID token token so here code is the one like it is called authorization code uh, which will be used to under only in the grant type called authorization grant type uh, basically it's an intermediate uh, secret uh, issued by the authorization server to the sorry OAuth server to the uh, client pr which presented to the uh, OAuth server again to get the access token that is here the access token is called a token here and ID token which we which we see earlier part that same as the ID token here next two slides list down the demos which I'm going to show it in this series to explain these concepts discovery registration dynamic client registration clients uh, public client and conference and clients authentication types all the uh, four types like client secret basic client secret post client secret jot private key jot and the flows like uh, authorization code flow implicit resource owner flow confidential credential flow refresh token flow introspect and how to revoke the token finally if possible I can provide a device token flow as well that's it for now I conclude this video we will see more demos in the later uh, part of this series thanks for watching this video please visit 100bytes.com for more tutorials thank you